Good morning. Good morning. This past Monday, I decided to visit the Lexington Green to pay my tribute to Captain uh, John Parker. As I was walking on the green, I thought to myself, you know what? The founding fathers of the United States and Chairman Mao have one thing in common. They all thought guns are very important political instruments. However, their, their similarities ended there. Chairman Mao wrote in one time, he said, political power grew out of barrel of a gun. And he also wrote, the party shall command the guns. However, in 1791, James Madison and his compatriots, believing that the power of the government is derived from the consent of the governed, and they wrote, the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. <laughs> years ago, I was a freshman year college uh, in China, and I was exercising my freedom of speech and assembly in Tiananmen Square. At that time, much like what we're doing today, we grew frustrated by the governmental corruption, we grew frustrated by the limitation of personal freedom. So, we demonstrated peacefully. However, the young passion and patriotism were crushed by hails of food metal jackets by the AK-47s. Or some of you will say, that's actually technically Type, 4, uh, type 56. <laughs> <laughs> we could not fight back because we did not have an inch of iron in our hands, to borrow a Chinese expression. We were not armed. Gun owners like us often say the Second Amendment is the protector against a tyrannical government. Some, some would argue that a man with a rifle has no standing against the military technology and machine of today. However, I would say that 20 million citizens in Beijing sure wish that they had some rifles to dispense at those days. Yeah. 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 Freedom is not free. Liberty has costs. We recognize that in this free society, criminals or mentally deranged could get weapons and murder innocents. The answer, however, is not to disarm the law-abiding citizens. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Not only criminals and the deranged will violate the laws anyway, more importantly, because when a government turns criminal, when a government turns deranged, the body count will not be 5, 10, or even 20. It will be in the hundreds, like in Tiananmen Square. It will be in the millions, as proved by the 90-year rule of the Chinese Communist Party. Our constitutional republic may look fuzzy and loving today. Well, if you think so, I got a TSA agent you'd like to meet. <laughs> but keep in mind that absolute power corrupts absolutely. Yeah. has monopoly on guns, they have absolute power. Do you know that Chinese constitution guarantees almost all the nice things that we have here? It is written in Chinese constitution that Chinese citizens enjoy freedom of speech and religion. They have human rights and property rights, and such rights cannot take away without the due process of the law. And do you know what? Chinese people do not have the rights to keep and bear arms. I assure you, all those nice things written 
on Chinese constitution are not worth the weight of the paper they're printed on. Because when government has all the guns, they have all the rights. I was not born a U.S. citizen. I was naturalized in 2007. In 2008, I became a proud gun owner. To me, a rifle is not for sporting or hunting. It is an instrument of freedom. It guarantees that I cannot be coerced, that I have free will, that I am a free man. Now, suppose the 20 million Beijing citizens had a couple million rifles on hand in 1989. How many rounds should they have been allowed to load into their magazines? Yeah. Ten rounds? No. Seven rounds? No. How about three rounds? No. Twenty-eight. Do, do not give up the fight, my friends. It may be a small step that you give up your rifle a th or a thirty-round magazine, but it will be a giant leap in the destruction of this great republic. Now, in closing, I will quote the words of Captain John Parker. Stand your ground. Do not fire until fired upon. But if they want a war, let us start here. Yeah. Yeah.